Alabama. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you for joining us. We are excited about this. I'm going to take maybe 15 minutes just to give you an overview of the university. Uh, we are located in Tuscaloosa. We are about an hour south, uh, southwest of Birmingham, which is the state's largest city. But the nice thing about Alabama, you're three hours from Atlanta, you're four hours from Nashville, you're four hours from New Orleans, four and a half hours from Memphis. So you really get a chance not just to experience life here in Tuscaloosa, but you can go ahead and spread out and uh, explore other parts of the Southeast, especially if you're not from the Southeast. Uh, Alabama it considers itself the flagship of, uh, uh, we're the flagship university in the state of Alabama. We have 38,000 students, about 55% of those come from out of state. And uh, that sounds large, I realize, but it's uh, we have a 23 to one student to faculty ratio. So uh, hopefully you'll have some questions. Uh, I don't have a slideshow, uh, but I'm gonna encourage you uh, to go to gobama.ua.edu to check out for more information. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our, um, our academic programs, our campus involvement, uh, and then we'll talk about the application uh, process, which is gonna be changing a little bit. But we have eight degree granting colleges and over 200 degree programs here at the university. And, the night, uh, and it ranges from anthropology to uh, whatever the end of the alphabet might be. But um, the nice thing about it is when you apply to the university and you put down what program you want to go into, when you're admitted to the university, you're admitted right away into that program. So only a uh, musical theater, dance, theater, and some of the music programs might have an audition. But if you're interested in engineering and you're admitted to the university, you're going to go right into it. You're not required to do a separate application process. Uh, we also have a couple of programs that allow students to have a unique academic experience. The STEM path to MBA, the CREATE path to MBA, the Accelerated Master's Program, where students get, uh, get admitted into those programs. And within five years, they're going to have not only their bachelor's degree, but they're going to have a master's. And, uh, you know, and master's uh, programs are, you know, up and coming and uh, they're going to, uh, the, the way that students are going to, uh, um, as you get into your profession, ways to advance in your profession. And a lot of students feel it's important to go ahead and get it done right from the get go. Yeah, we can talk about academics, but I think a lot of you are going to be interested in campus life. We have over 600 uh, student organizations that are here. And if you can't find that one, that suits you, you can go ahead and start your own. Just have to find nine, nine other friends that are willing to go ahead and do that with you. Uh, it ranges from fraternities and sororities, about 35% uh, of our students are members of Greek letter organizations. We have a very active student government. Um, we have a campus ministry program. Uh, Hillel is an important part of that. And Lisa will talk some about that. Uh, intramural sports, um, honor societies, community service. We have a lot of major campus resources, but we still feel like a small campus. And we're very inclusive and diverse campus. Uh, our application process is going to change a little bit for the upcoming year, but it's still going to be pretty simple. I could ask Quentin and Rebecca, how many essays did you have to write? Zero. Uh, how many letters of recommendation did you need? Absolutely. How many times were you required to come to campus to interview? Zero. You know, so that's one thing that uh, uh, we think is uh, when we go ahead and take a look at a student's application uh, at Alabama, we're measuring you against our standard. We're not measuring you against everybody, everybody else that's applied. We want to know what you're bringing to the table. If we feel you're qualified, we're gonna go ahead and admit you. And we do it on a rolling admissions. Uh, this coming fall, we're gonna be going on to the Common App, uh, which is something different for us. And so we're still in the process of finalizing that. So I would encourage you in terms of looking for admissions requirements to go to the gobama.ua.edu website. We're going, we'll have a homegrown UA application and we're gonna have, uh, we're also gonna be on the Common App. Uh, you submit, if you do the UA application, it's a $40 application fee and submit your high school transcript. We're going to continue to be test optional for this upcoming year. So, so 
for those of you that might have had a challenge having the opportunity to go ahead and take the ACT or SAT, you don't need to worry about it. If you've taken it, we encourage you to go ahead and submit it because it gives us an additional data point uh, to take a look at. Uh, our priority consideration date for admission for the fall is February 1st. And so we guarantee any student that has submitted a uh, completed application to us by February 1st, we uh, give that we uh, guarantee you an admissions decision by the end of February. And we let you know where you stand as you go through the process. You know, you might submit it and you might have, uh, your GPA might not be up to where we would like it to be. We'll say, well, why don't you go ahead and wait and send us your seven semester grades and we're gonna go ahead and evaluate your application again. But again, we're gonna be test optional. We're gonna take a look at the strength of your curriculum. And when we get your high school transcript, we're gonna take the, your GPA directly off the transcript. So if you have a weighted and an unweighted, we're gonna take the higher of the two. And the same thing, if you've uh, been able to take both the ACT and the SAT, uh, there's a concordance table. And if your ACT is higher than your SAT equivalent, that's what we're going to use for both admissions and scholarship consideration. Now, one of the, the new, other new thing that we're going to be doing this year is uh, we're going to ask uh, students when they submit their admissions application, that's also going to serve as their scholarship application which is something different for us. Normally, you know, you would get admitted and then we'd send you the scholarship application. We're asking you to do that right from the beginning. And so as you're part of your application process, we're gonna be taking a look at uh, uh, your, the scholarship as well. And there's gonna be uh, information on your uh, academic achievement. It's gonna be uh, information on community service, on leadership, on work experience and something about yourself that's unique or different. And that application is the only application you have to do to be considered for scholarships at the university. Uh, the university is very generous with scholarships. We have about 28% of our students uh, receive some form of merit-based scholarship uh, to the university, totally separate from financial aid. Uh, uh, to be considered for scholarships, you're going to need to go ahead and submit your application, uh, admissions application, by January 15th. I would encourage you to go to the scholarships.ua.edu website to take a look at the types of scholarships that we offer. Number one is our uh, automatic merit scholarship, and that's based on a GPA and a test score. So uh, starting with, uh, if you're out-of-state uh, out students, you can go there and you can see what the out-of-state scholarships are, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and those are based on the test score and the GPA. And generally it starts with a 28 ACT and a 3.0 SAT, and you, are, you know exactly right out of the gate what you're going to uh, receive. We also last year instituted what are called competitive academic scholarships. And those were for students that didn't have the opportunity to go ahead and take a submit a test score. So they're going to take a, they're going to review the scholarship application and uh, the top ones are going to be put in one of three tiers. And then uh, individuals will have, to have the opportunity to be considered for scholarships. And then there's also departmental scholarships. And then the Alumni Association gives about $6 million a year in leadership scholarships. And again, uh, for this, that scholarship application, uh, for, for you to be considered for scholarship, you need to go ahead and submit your admissions application by January 15th. Um, we, uh, beginning in October, you have the opportunity to sign up for financial aid. And that's the FAFSA free application for federal student aid. And that makes you eligible for you know, any number of grants and loans uh, that are available. About 60% of our students are receiving financial aid in, uh, and also some in addition with uh, scholarships. Uh, we have uh, Honors College, which about 30% uh, of the incoming students uh, have the opportunity to take honors, uh, honors uh, get in the honors program. And you might be thinking, whoa, Rick, wait, hang on, I want to take my foot off the accelerator. I've been taking AP classes, I've been taking IB, I've been taking honors classes in high school. The nice thing about the Honors College of Alabama is you only have to take 18 hours of honors courses over, the, over four years. If you think about it, that's one course a semester 
and you could be done with your honors obligation by the end of your junior year. Uh, for those students that have taken the test, it's a 3-5 GPA, um, uh, along with a 30 ACT or a 1360 SAT. For those that don't have that, it's a 3-7 GPA, don't have the test score, it's a 3-7 GPA, two letters of recommendation, an additional essay. And the nice thing about the Honors College at Alabama is if you qualify, you're admitted. Uh, it's not like you're competing against everybody else. You know, you could be like me. Uh, I didn't do well test, you know, uh, going into, um, uh, you know, going into college. If I make a 3-5 my first semester at Alabama, I get invited to join the Honors College. So I would encourage you to look at that. You know, once you're admitted, uh, you have the opportunity to do your freshman enrollment deposit, which is a $200 non-refundable deposit. Then in October, the housing application comes up. Uh, we require students to live on campus, but wherever you go to school, if you have the opportunity, you need to live on campus. Students that live on campus tend to have higher grades, are more satisfied with their college experience, and are more likely to graduate. And trust me, you have the rest of your life to worry about cleaning bathrooms and paying cable bills. You know, let somebody else take care of that because the transition that you're going to be going through is going to be pretty much, it's going to be a lot different than you're going through you know, right now. You know, you, you might have, you're going to have classes at different times. You're not going to have somebody there, uh, you know, waking you up in the morning. You're not going to have somebody doing your laundry. So you have a big emotional, social, uh, academic transition that you're going to be making. Uh, those students that sign up for housing by February 1st get to pick their rooms. Others uh, will be assigned by housing. And then the last thing, and it's actually going on right now, is Bama Bound orientation that happens, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in May, June, and July. Um, we have recruiters all over the country. So if you're in Georgia, all you need to do is go to gobama.ua.edu and click uh, on the uh, recruiter, find my recruiter, put your state in, and then it will tell you who your recruiter is. So like I know in Baltimore, that's going to be uh, Megan Payne, and she actually lives up in that area. So, you know, you get some more information about the university, and then you can get, you know, call Megan or email her and say, hey, you know, I need to talk to you a little bit more. Quentin had um, Dee McGraw-Hickey, I believe. She lives on Long Island, but she gets into New York City at times. So we have recruiters all over. Uh, we've been uh, doing campus tours since last July. Uh, I would encourage you to visit campus. Um, we have walking tours. We also have bus tours. Uh, and I would encourage you to work with your regional recruiter because if you're going to come from, say, Baltimore or New York, you want to do more than just do the campus tour. You want to learn a little bit more about the different academic programs that we have. You know, we'll set up a visit to go over to Hillel if you'd like. And uh, or you know, uh, work with getting one of the students over there to go ahead and take you to lunch while you're here. Uh, visit, uh, you know, do the Greek life thing if that's something that you're interested in. So again, it's gobama.ua.edu, and I think I right at 15 minutes. So I'll do another roll tide, and I'm going to force Rebecca and Quentin and Lisa to do a roll tide when they're finished at the end of the program, if that's all right. Great. Thank you so thank you so much, Rick. Thank you. That was that that I I loved hearing that. I felt excited about it. I'm ready to come for a campus visit. I really am. Since you have a rising senior, I expect it. I know. I was listening. I love what you said about um, uh, no essays. No, I mean, my goodness, because she's you know, totally stressing out about those things. So, and she has some friends that are interested in there. So we may end up visiting there. Thank you. Well, I'm hold you to it. So I'm gonna make Lisa make sure that we keep you on that. And okay. So okay, well, thank you so much, Rick. That was a great overview of the university. And now I'm delighted that Lisa Besnoy is with us. She's the executive director of Bama Hillel and she'll give us a lens into Jewish life on campus and what that looks like and what kind of experiences you can have. Yeah, thank you, Susie. And thank you for the introduction. 
One of the things that Rick kind of ended his session with is a roll tide. And that truly is a part of our life and culture. If you've ever seen the commercial where people greet each other, roll tide, or they finish speeches, roll tide, um, uh, speeches at weddings, they all end in roll tide. And so it really is part of our tradition and culture. So I'm sure Rick won't have a hard time getting a roll tide out of us um, at the end of the show. And maybe you at home will also join us in a roll tide. Um, so I'm the executive director of Bama Hillel, the Jewish Student Center here on campus. I do have some pictures I'm gonna put up in just a moment to show you, um, but I want to make sure we have time to spotlight our students because as much as I love the University of Alabama, I am a two-time graduate of Alabama. Um, I was part of Jewish life and I was a student here and very involved now. Now, um, it's, it's the students that can really share their stories and give you a flavor of what Jewish life is on campus. Um, to thank Susie and Rick um, for this opportunity um, and for Rick to be included um, from admissions really shows how a large university supports all aspects of campus life. And um, to be a part with uh, campus partners that are supportive, an administration that's supportive um, and knows who we are. And I can walk into the president's office um, with an appointment, um, but knows who, who knows who Hillel is and will come to Shabbat dinner. And we recently expanded the building and, uh, and Dr. Abel, our, our president, university president was here. Um, really means a lot to have a large university in all aspects who are very supportive of Jewish life on campus. Um, some of the questions that parents tend to ask, I'm gonna to try to just share that real quick. So if you're embarrassed to ask in the chat or things that, you know, some of the things that I often get asked um, about the number of students we have on campus, I think there's a common misperception that there are not a lot of Jewish students on campus. We have a very active Jewish population here. We estimate around a thousand Jewish students on campus. I think there are more, um, but I feel like that's a conservative estimate. Um, but not, it's not just the numbers, it's the community that they create. Um, they are very active um, in Hillel and, and Jewish life on campus and pro-Israel groups uh, and SGA uh, and Greek life and um, business, the business school. Um, so there are a lot of different aspects that our students really um, shine in and Jewish life is part of that, but th it's not everything. Um, we're happy to be a home away from home and have kind of created a, a mini JCC at our Bama Hillel. Um, I'm, I just, a big basketball game actually just picked up kind of outside my office. So I was hoping that if you hear, if you hear some thudding, that's what that is. Um, but that's what we want. I say it's a good day when someone's sleeping on the couch, studying at Hillel and uh, playing basketball. Like that's what we wanna see is a common place for Jewish students and their friends to come. We often encourage, especially freshmen who are coming if they have a non-Jewish roommate or a non-Jewish partner, bring them to Hillel. We have Shabbat dinner every Friday night. We have lots of bagel brunches on Sunday. We celebrate all the holidays here and we want you to enjoy your time here, but we want your non-Jewish friends to have a great experience in our Jewish community as well. Um, some non-Jewish students just love coming here. And I once asked a young man to lead, I think how much he had a Shabbat dinner and he said, I'm not Jewish. And I said, really? I said, well, that's okay. And he said, um, I just love coming here. And I said, that's great. I mean, we want that experience for all of our students. Um, it's a very safe place for our students in terms of um, inclusion and uh, welcoming to students from, um, you know, from a variety of different backgrounds. A lot of times I get asked about BDS issues on campus. Um, we're very fortunate that I've been here 10 years, not including when I went to school here in the 90s. Um, we haven't had any BDS issues on campus, the boycott divestment sanction issues. Um, we haven't had any blatant acts of anti-Semitism. And again, if things happen on a national level, our community comes together to support us. Um, and I kind of get chills when I, when I say that because it's true. Um, and I think it's, it's something that is very special about this community because it is a close net community in Tuscaloosa, Alabama that you may not expect to find such vibrant Jewish life. Um, if you are thinking about Alabama, as Rick was saying, come to campus. I mean, that is 
what you what will will just solidify any kind of concerns that you have. Um, you step on the on the quad. Sometimes I drive out of my way or walk out of my way just to walk across um, the quad and you know see the frisbees and the dogs and and people walking to class. Um, it is out of a movie and with stellar academics and opportunities when you graduate as well uh, to. Um, connect with alumni, to connect with um, with Jewish Jewish members of the community, um, and it's been really a great um, um, a, you know, a, a great community that we've created here. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen with you real quick, just to run through some pictures, and I won't take much time. Okay, and I guess I can see the panels. You guys can see my screen. Um, and so these just are kind of my warm and fuzzy pictures. I had a hard time deciding what, to, what which pictures to show um, because this is at Hillel. Um, I'm at Hillel right now, but it's really about community and, and these students met here. Um, we have a student from Michigan, a student from California and a student from Atlanta um, all here and they met at Hillel. Um, we celebrate all the holiday holidays here. Um, Pat, this was Passover. Um, we dress up as Moses. Um, you'll meet Rebecca. She may have dressed up as Moses for us um, this past year during COVID um, in the mask and the beard, and it was great. Um, but really, we try to create an environment that um, that fits um, whatever culture, Jewish cultural background you come from and make it a, a place to, to gather. Um, we are on university Wi-Fi. We have free printing, which sounds strange until you're paying for it in the computer labs. Um, so we have a lot of students that come and um, they'll just come here to study. We have a snack room that has drinks and snacks that, and matzo ball soup in the freezer. Um, so lots of things that are just kind of a home away from home um, while you're on campus. Um, there's Rebecca again, but we make challah on Thursdays. Um, and so um, this is when they were serving, um, we were having a taco mama Shabbat dinner um, and some challah to serve. And also you can purchase to take home with you. Um, some Rosh Hashanah pictures. Um, this was one of our uh, freshman welcome events. Um, every year, uh, the classes start on Wednesday. On Thursday, we hold a freshman event and that's so students can come in and meet each other and um, meet from their class and not be part of um, walk into a, a Shabbat dinner with 200 people and not know anyone, that we create small group opportunities for students to come um, and meet each other. And this is our building again, um, a Shabbat dinner, very casual, come as you are. Um, this is an intern group. Um, I apologize to our current interns. They are, they were all masked for, so I wanted to put up a picture that was not masked because hopefully when you come to campus, that is what you will see. Um, but we have 13 paid intern positions um, and they, uh, the students help run the building. I mean, everything from uh, building operations to programming, to cooking, to making matzo ball soup, um, they, do, they do it all and we couldn't, we couldn't operate without this group. And again, from you know, serving food, this was from our groundbreaking um, and really uh, an environment that we would love for you to be a part of. I encourage you if you are on campus, not only walk down the quad, meet some professors, um, but also to, um, to, to stop by Hillel, join us for dinner, join us for a brunch. The, um, there is a community synagogue that is about 20 yards away from us. We share a courtyard. Um, and so that's available for students here too. Um, you, students have free membership. So if you'd like to go to services, if you're far from home, um, you don't have to um, purchase a ticket or make a donation. We just have our meals at Hillel and we walk if you want to, across the courtyard um, and services are available there with our rabbi and Jewish community. Hey, Mason, would you mind if I mention that you're part of the God Quad? I uh, love the God, we do call it the God Quad, sorry. In the uh, Quad, which is the central part of campus and literally a stone throw is what's called the God Quad. You have Hillel, St. Francis Catholic, uh, Canterbury Episcopal, Baptist Campus Ministries, uh, Wesley United Methodist and University Lutheran right there, uh, all within a block. Uh, so the students call it the God Quad. Right, it's a great place, the God Quad. You could see a Rick Funk sighting, <laughs> um, but um, you could also see um, a Nick Saban sighting. 
um, that um, my children. I'm sorry. Eight forty-five on Sundays. <laughs> So uh, my children um, playing on the temple playground sometimes have seen him walk in um, and they yell, what do they yell? Roll, Roll tide. tide. <laughs> I got that. I got yeah. that. Well, Lisa, thank you so much. Um, it sounds like it sounds like such a welcoming, warm place. I mean, it just and the smiles on all the people's faces in the photos. And I love the Passover Seder because um, I know when you're far away from home and it's kind of your especially your first year, you think it might not be a big deal to be away for the Jewish holidays. But all of a sudden you start to feel like I need something familiar. What am I going to do? And so it's wonderful to have a place to go. Um, so thank you, thank you so much. Thank now you. we're really lucky to be joined by Rebecca and by Quentin, but I'm gonna let y'all, Rebecca, why don't you get started and just tell us about life on campus, You know why you chose University of Alabama, um, the kind of things you're involved in there and just you know, like a day in the life of being on campus. Sure. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Goldscheider. I am a rising junior at the Capstone, as we like to call it. Um, I will be entering the upper division nursing program this upcoming fall. So I'm really looking forward to that. It was a lot of hard work to get there, but it's definitely going to pay off. And I'm super excited to check out our brand new nursing building. So can't wait for that. Um, some things I am involved in on campus our Bama Hillel, obviously. Um, it really has become my home away from home. I could not do without Bama Hillel. Um, I am also the president and liaison for Tide Pack, which is UA's pro-Israel advocacy group. So we work directly with the national APAC organization. Um, and that's another just for someone who's going into the medical field, but also has a passion for policy. Um, that's been a great outlet for me. And then lastly, I am involved in Beat Auburn, Beat Hunger, which is the seven weeks leading up to the Auburn game against the Auburn, Alabama game. Um, there's a food drive that um, helps support the North Alabama communities. So that's become kind of just a really fun way to celebrate the football season, but also by helping to give back to the community. Um, I would say the reason I chose Alabama was because I went to a really small Jewish day school. So I was looking for a place that could give me that small Jewish, that small feel, but also something totally different, which was Alabama. Alabama is a huge rah-rah school. I mean, my little high school, we, we could not win a sports game, even if we tried. And now I go to a championship school. I mean, I could not have asked for such a contrast but it was really just the connections that I made from the start I mean like Mr. Funk said I mean it was just the connection with my recruiter Megan and I still have contact with her I mean she helped me so much throughout the entire application process the entire is this really what you want to do process and I just could not have been more appreciative of that I mean she even she got me the contact for Bama Hillel. I wouldn't have made my way over to Hillel when I came for my campus visit if it wasn't for her. So it was that small connection that has led me to so many other connections that have helped scale down the size of UA for me. And that's really where I found such a deep passion and love for UA because I've made all this huge school into all these tiny little communities. I have my Jewish community. I have my nursing community. I have my community from my freshman year dorm. I mean, it's just, you can scale it down. And when you do it, it's just the most amazing thing ever. I mean, the, the one thing is you got to deal with the heat, but when you have everything else, you don't even realize that, that, that it's 98 degrees outside. <laughs> Um, but that's just my little spiel about UA. I could go on for days and days and days, and Lisa and Quentin both know that. Um, but I'll let Q talk a little bit. Um, and if we want to bounce off each other, we can do that as well. Great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I am uh, Quentin Dooley, and I study finance at the University of Alabama. And one of the main reasons I wanted to come to campus was like just the amazing atmosphere of Alabama. The education is phenomenal, phenomenal, but also the social aspect is amazing. Everyone is so nice down there. Southern charm is a real thing. And it's just an amazing place to be. The academic environment is great. 
all the advisors. I'm in the business school. I love my advisor. And the campus is absolutely amazing. I'm sure Mr. Funk has heard that many a time that when you come to campus and you go for your tour, it's impossible not to fall in love with it. And my experience with Jewish life on campus has really been nothing but amazing. Uh, Lisa is amazing director of Hillel and the community at Hillel is so nice and very close and everyone is very just genuine with who they are. And it's just an amazing experience to be there. Shabbat's every Friday night, especially since Greek life doesn't have, I'm involved in Greek life and Greek life doesn't have dinner on Fridays. So Shabbat is perfect. And we all go there and I see all my Jewish friends and it's just an amazing experience. And uh, one of the things I really want to touch on with a lot of the situation, you know, going on in the world today with anti-Semitism, there's absolutely zero anti-Semitism on campus, especially coming from a student who's in a Jewish fraternity. There's nothing weird about being Jewish on campus, even though the population isn't the biggest, but everyone is just okay with it. You know, we're treated like everyone else as we should be. And there's absolutely zero problems with that. Great, thank you so much. One of the questions I was gonna ask Quentin was about Greek life. So you definitely touched on that. Um, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more. I mean, is everyone part of Greek life? If that, if you don't feel like that's for you, is there still a place for you at Alabama? You know, is there still a, a way to get involved in things and meet people? Yeah, can, so. You can touch on that and then I can say my part. <laughs> yes. So like Mr. Funk said, there's 600 plus clubs. I'm interested in uh, joining the water sports club next year because I think it'd be fun and it's something new that I've never tried before. So if you don't find yourself in Greek life, there are plenty of people for you to hang out with. There's still a million things to do, whether you want to be a part of any organization or still involved with campus and student government. And there's so much, and there's so many people, and there, there's so many just nice people around everywhere, regardless whether it's in Greek life or not. And that doesn't mean that you're not gonna be socially active if you're not in Greek life. And I'm sure Rebecca knows that very well. Yeah, I'd like to say, sometimes I feel weird saying I'm not in Greek life because I feel like everyone you talk to at UA is in Greek life, but that's just not true at all. Um, like Mr. Funk said, it's only 30% are involved in Greek life. And I have, <laughs> I don't think, I'm not the kind of person to be in Greek life. It just, it's not my forte. Um, but like Quentin said, there are so, so, so many student organizations that you can get involved with and so many different outlets um, and really I think the best part about living on campus freshman year is especially for me because I did not join Greek life was I made so many friends in the dorms um, which made me not even need to join a Greek life house um, so that's something that's really special about living in the dorms and I mean I went totally random it actually is a funny story I was in Israel when we had the room requests so I was in the middle of the desert and I could not log on to anything <laughs> to pick a roommate pick a room or anything so I went totally random and I ended up having the best freshman year dorm experience so it's really for someone who wasn't involved in Greek life it does not plan to be involved in Greek life. I have my friends from my freshman year dorm and that really did it for me. Great, wow, thank you. So it sounds like you could go either way. I mean, it sounds like you, you're you you're gonna be happy either way. Um, tell us a little bit about class size. I mean, um, you know, do you feel like, I know sometimes freshman classes can be really large, but as you, as you go on in your academic career, do you feel, do you have access to your professors? Do you feel like you get into small working groups? Oh, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, so the general education uh, courses, they are very big classes, but your professor is always available. I remember I struggled a lot in accounting and there were maybe like one to 200 people in that class. But after class and anytime I want to make an appointment on Zoom, I was able to talk with my teacher. And as well as the advising, the advising system is amazing. And I don't, at least in the business school, I don't know, Rebecca, as well, if you feel that way, but I absolutely love my advisor and she is always available. I'll just shoot her an email 
and she's like, come on in, in this day. And it's really amazing. It may seem intimidating at first with the large class size, but if you need to reach out, there is always help for you. And um, I will also say um, most classes, I'm pretty sure every class has a teaching assistant, either a graduate teaching assistant or just a regular teaching assistant. And they're so helpful. I mean, I will say a lot of my 101 classes were pretty big, but there would be six graduate teaching assistants. And um, we would be split up into, our class was split up like alphabet, so A to G or, you know, and each group had a grad TA and the grad TA worked directly with that group of students. So it took a 150 person class and it made it down to a 30 person group. Um, so it really cuts down on that. And then I will say that the university has a student success center or center for success. Um, and for someone who had to take a lot of science classes where you have to really, really work at that, or you're, you're, it's essentially, if you, if you don't study, you won't do well, but that's what college is like, no matter what your major is. But I will say the, I really took advantage of the university's resources through the student success center. Um, and I went to the tutoring programs mm. that really just made my classes so much easier. So from being able to work with TAs 101 to being able to go to the tutoring sessions, I was just really able to fully grasp the material, even if I wasn't on a rare case able to get a hold of the professor, which in most cases I was. So it's like you have three outlets to get all the information you need to be able to ace that class. And there's also uh, tutoring for a lot of the bigger classes as well. That, that was one, uh, that was actually my next question. So Rebecca, you touched on that, like what kind of support services are there? So that's great to know there's a tutoring center. I mean, it sounds like the professors are really accessible and that, I mean, I think what you're saying is right. You know, these great big classes, you can kind of pare them down and, and make them more personable and make them more reasonable. So you can be in a, in a smaller group. Um, yeah. If you allow me, any freshman level class that has over 75 will have an accompanying recitation or a lab group. Uh, your freshman English is capped at 26. So yeah, you'll have the big lecture classes, but for, uh, as a freshman, it's all broken down. And uh, Rebecca mentioned the Capstone Center for Student Success. We also have the Writing Center. So you know, some people take advantage of that. We have the speaking studio. Mm -hmm. Tom studies class and you're scared to death of speaking in public mm -hmm. you have the speaking studio where you can go in there and get tips on that and then also the math lab uh, for students that might have uh, challenges in math but uh, Rebecca hit the nail on the head when she talked about the Capstone Center for Student Success they have one-on-one -on -one and small group tutoring it's free um, and I think it's for a uh, for uh, uh, language, I think it's Spanish, and the sciences, uh, and it's free. Great. Thank you so much. I, I don't know, kind of in closing, if there's anything else, Rebecca, Quentin, that you want to tell us about life in campus. I mean, it seems like uh, you covered a great deal, and I can I can feel your enthusiasm and your, your love of your university. Is there anything else um, you know, that you think someone should know in, in, in their, you know, if they think they're interested in the University of Alabama and it's really, you know, one of their, one of their schools they really want to check out. Is there anything else you think they should know that, that you want to share with them before, before we close? I mean, I really think, and this has been repeated a couple times, but if there's, if you have any spark about Alabama, you have to come see the campus. And if you're a Jewish student, you have to come visit Hillel because we will sell you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just the place to be. And even though I'm 780 miles from home, I have found such a home in Tuscaloosa. And I would not change that for anything. It was the best decision I have ever made to go to UA. I mean, I can't rave more about this school. I really can't. Yeah, I completely, I couldn't agree with Rebecca Moore, really. And also, if you're thinking about, you know, come to a football game, football games are absolutely amazing. And just the atmosphere being there when you hear Dixie Land Delight come on, it's just amazing.
Great. Well, thank y'all so much. I really, Rick, Lisa, Rebecca, Quentin, I feel like I got a great taste of the University of Alabama and um, Roll Tide. And I thank y'all so much for taking some time out of your early evening and joining us. I wish Quentin, Rebecca, I wish y'all good luck. Enjoy your summer. Enjoy a little bit of time off. And um, for those of you out there watching, thank you so much. Continue to follow us at JumpSpark ATL. We have tons more of these information sessions and workshops for parents, for teens. We're featuring a bunch of other schools between now and June 30th. So watch our social media and tune in. And thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Right, also, yeah. really quick. I would like to say that if you want to reach out to me or Rebecca, I'm sure our information should be on the JumpSpark website. Yes. I think if you want to reach out by email or anything, we would be more than happy to take anyone around campus or out to dinner or something if you have a free night. And yeah, if you want to see the Hillel as well, or just have any questions in general, we would be more than happy to help out. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Roll Tide. Bye. Bye.